Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Louise from The Dusty Jacket. Thanksgiving is over, and that means that the holidays are officially upon us. Yes, 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 yes. Unless you're one of those people who already had everything decorated by the day after Halloween. You got me. So pour some eggnog and untangle those tree lights as we give you five books to get you into the holiday spirit. We'll be offering up three books for young readers and two books for older readers. Ready? All right, let's get this party started. Our first book is A Christmas Memory by Truman Capote with a recommended reading age of seven to 10. A Christmas Memory is Capote's earliest recollections of his life in a small rural Alabama town. Up until the age of 10, he lived there with a family of distant and elderly cousins. His book is filled with heartwarming memories of Christmas, beginning with the inaugural baking of the fruitcakes. Started making it, had a breakdown. Bon Appetit. And followed by hanging wreaths on all the front windows, making gifts for the family, and searching for the perfect tree. Oh, I love this tree. On Christmas Eve night, Capote's cousin confesses that she wants to give him a bicycle for Christmas, but she doesn't have the money. <sighs> Through this and other stories, Capote shows us that we should be thankful not for the gifts under our tree, but rather for those who gather around it. Next is The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum with a recommended reading age of 9 to 12. This book is not just a history of one of the world's most notable and recognizable figures, but it's also a charming story of devotion, family, and love. More importantly, Baum gives us a book celebrating the virtues of inclusion. Why are you including me in this? As an abandoned baby, Claus was adopted and accepted within the secret world of immortals. As an adult, he once questioned whether or not wealthy children deserve presents too, since they already had so much, to which the queen of the fairies replied, whether it be rich or poor, a child's longing for pretty playthings are natural. I think, friend Claus, it is your duty to make all the little ones glad, whether they chance to live in palaces or in cottages. Children and adults can benefit from the messages Baum delivers in this classic children's story that shows us that the idea of extending grace, mercy, and joy to everyone we encounter is something we should aspire to every day of the year, and not just one. Number three is the hilarious and enjoyable The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming, A Christmas Story by Lemony Snicket with a recommended reading age of 7 to 12. Be prepared for this is no ordinary Christmas story. This is a story of a latka, that delicious traditional part of the Hanukkah celebration. But this particular latka talks and is trying very hard to explain exactly what it is and what it represents. I'm really getting frustrated with the lack of communication. In true Lemony Snicket spirit, this story is a wickedly funny and dastardly delightful tale about likenesses, differences, traditions, and the need to find a common thread that connects us all. This book is a wonderful way to introduce young readers to the history of Hanukkah and the symbolism behind the eight-day celebration. Happy Hanukkah. Lemony Snicket has entertained readers with a number of unpleasant books, but this one offers a sweet and valuable lesson of how different things can often blend together. For the adults, we have book number four, Mr. Dickens and His Carol by Samantha Silva, which I rated four out of five stars. Throughout history, authors have credited some of their most famous works to muses. Dante had Beatrice Portinari, F. Scott Fitzgerald had his wife, Zelda Sayer, and Charles Dickens has a poor seamstress by the name of Eleanor Lovejoy. Dickens leads a blessed but expensive lifestyle and he's quickly running out of money. Despite past successes, his newest book is selling poorly. Threatening to withhold future pay, his publisher insists Dickens write a Christmas book in just a matter of weeks. Don't care how I want it now. Combining facts with creative fancy, Silva gives readers a wonderful behind the scenes look into one of the world's most beloved Christmas tales, the origins of Ebenezer Scrooge, Jacob Marley, Bob Cratchit, and Tiny Tim are all so believable that you'll forget that this is a work of fiction. Last is the Christmas classic itself, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which I rated five out of five stars. This book is Dickens' beloved Christmas song to the world. First published in 1843, this classic story is divided into staves or staffs rather than chapters, where every character is a note 
Every ghostly visit is a movement, and every revelation is a crescendo that builds to the climax when Scrooge realizes the dire consequences of his avarice and malevolence. You were right about everything, okay? This story has been adapted over two dozen times for film, but nothing quite compares to reading and absorbing Dickens' original words, which contain a few subtleties that are otherwise lost when presented visually. One example is that prior to Marley's visit, the characters of Bob Cratchit and Fred are simply given the titles Clerk in the Tank or Scrooge's Nephew. This omission would lead the reader to conclude that these characters are inconsequential. However, it is only later in the book when we realize what an important part these individuals will eventually play in Scrooge's road to redemption. I'm very important. Uh... I love the many moral and spiritual lessons Dickens provides us, but my favorite is Marley's warning to Scrooge when he says, I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. In an uncertain world where, despite careful planning or our best intentions, life doesn't always go the way we want, it is important to remember that if there is a chance, no matter how slight or remote, then there is still hope. Well, that's it. We'll post a link to our Goodreads page in the comment section below should you wish to read the full review of any of these books. And if you enjoyed this video, a click on the like and subscribe buttons would make my Christmas wish come true. And make sure to hit the bell so that you're notified when new videos become available. Again, thanks for watching. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I look forward to bringing back some old titles so that you can make new memories because any time is a good time to dust off a new favorite. Keep reading.